your skin, that shit is popping, girl. Body on ten, damn, you got it, girl. You got a boss up, getting them checks, living your best, racks up. Session every weekend with Sunday School with Lex. Connect with like-minded black women every Sunday at 6 on the Lexus Exodus platform where we have live panels and call-in shows in order to connect and share our stories, discuss divestment and other important topics pertaining to the plights of black women, discuss self-empowerment and self-improvement, and much, much more. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. ET at patreon.com slash Lexus Exodus. See you soon. Hey, boos, hey. It is Lexus Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. How are y'all doing? And like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Please share. Please comment in the comment section. Let me know that you're listening. Also, if you enjoy listening to my content on the go, the show is now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for audio listeners. Go check out my Patreon community where you can get access to bonus episodes and exclusive content and also a private community of like-minded, divested women. It is linked below. Please also follow me on social media platforms. You can check me out everywhere on all platforms at Lexis Exodus. I also have a backup channel just in case something happens to this one. It is called Lex X. That's L-E-X-E-X. You can find all of this information in the description below. So I want to talk about Black women learning self-love and the importance of women healing as a part of the initial stages of our divestment journeys. And shout out to little patron Indigo Savage. She's one of my mods who suggested this idea I'm so thankful for her. This is timely. This is a brilliant idea. We just talked about how all over online, Black women are falling for dusties of other races, powder donut dusties, sand dusties, dusties of no colors, who show a little bit of attention and affection to the point where we're getting taken advantage of grifters and swindlers all over the internet. Well, I think the reason why is because of this. So we're falling prey to this because a common mistake Black women are making is not healing our inner issues first prior to deciding to deal with any man. Remember, divestment is not about dating. It's not about the male gaze. It's not about male validation. It's about removing yourself from toxic environments, prioritizing yourself and self-preservation, and only engaging in actions that are affirming and that are beneficial and that serve you. So a part of your initial phases of divestment, you should always be looking inward and healing all of that trauma and toxicity you endured in Blackistan and also going to therapy and focusing on yourself to heal your wounds so that you don't become further damaged when you do decide to finally date. Okay, so I want to start off by looking at what Black women dating with trauma while being unhealed looks like. Then I want to look at what Black women should do, and I want to examine what healthy and healed Black women look, act, and talk like, okay? So let's look at this first clip that illustrates that. When a man tells you he isn't ready, believe him. Everybody thinks we're going to get married. They think we're the best couple. So I go home for a weekend he came with me for the first couple days and then he went back and i was just like okay that's interesting but maybe he just doesn't want to deal with my family i felt like something was off we were sitting on the couch one night i think it was our anniversary and he was just like you know i'm about to move into this place and i want you to move in with me etc etc i was like i know yeah i know we've talked about this i really you're just like well, you know, I really love you. I love, you know, how things are going now. And then he starts to like get off the couch and bend down. And I was just like, what are you doing? My heart drops. 
And I was just like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he was just like, well, psych. I was just like, what just happened? What? Uh, what? So he gets up and he was just like, you know, we're not getting married. We're not. I was just like, I don't know that. Is that really what's going on? And he was just like, I mean, you know, we've talked about this. I'm not really ready. Okay, so this woman is on, on on live TV, on national TV, telling the whole world how her dude tricked her into thinking that he was proposing, then said, psych, psych, I'm not ready. Okay, just wait, there's more. Can I get child support? Yes. Yes, yes, you go, girl. Oh, we got you, we got you. you got it, girl. What do you think? Oh, Talking about. <laughs> All right, turn him back on. He said yes. Uh -oh. Man, turn the music back on. <laughs> Hit that music. Hit that music. <laughs> DJ. <laughs> <laughs> So this clip is of a woman who is in such an unhealthy, unhealed place, she decided to get on one knee to propose to this dude at the club just to get rejected and humiliated by him in front of the entire venue. Okay, that's what, what you don't do, Black women. Just wait, there's more. Okay, and these are just captions, so we'll read it. It says, he destroyed my car. So we see her car effed up, all the windows broken out of it. Her, He even got the um, side mirror smashed and everything. It's just demolished. The back window, windshield is all messed up. He doesn't look like he broken. he's broken the taillights. Then she shows a clip of him saying, we got back together after he did all that. And he's massaging her feet. She says, I love him. Child, she bought a new car. And the dude messed up the new car again. Did the same thing to the new one, y'all. Got it fixed, and he destroyed it again. Put water in the engine. They got back together again, and he threw her dog out, and she never saw her dog again, child. I can't. This is what unhealthy, toxic, traumatized dating looks like, okay? This is what happens when black women who are unhealed seek romantic relationships to heal them. Just wait, there's more. Y'all brace yourself for this one because this is a hot mess. Okay, so this clip is of two women who got into demolition derby. They're driving full speed into one another's cars because of the desperate and dire state that they are in. Okay, so they, they're, they're literally playing bumper cars with their vehicles out in the street, risking their safety, um, ruining their cars, totaling their cars, just because they're in such a, a poor, dire state mentally. And obviously have no self-esteem or self-worth here. Okay. Black women are not okay collectively. This is not normal. The solution for these women isn't just to open up their options. The solution is to heal. Y'all know I've, I've always been a proponent of holistic approach to divestment. Okay. So meaning that you need to divest emotionally. You need to divest professionally. You need to divest uh, romantically, of course, in your, your workplace, in your uh, platonic relationships. You need to heal, seek therapy. 
because people who are subjecting themselves and enduring things like this just to get a man need solitude. You don't need to date. You need to heal. You need to go off somewhere and get intensive therapy. You need a mental health professional. You need to work on yourself so that you can learn self-love and learn how to heal these wounds that got you out here accepting this type of treatment in the first place. Okay. That way, when you are ready to date, then you're able to approach it with a healthier mindset because this is not it. Okay. So now we see what you shouldn't do. Let's look at some things that illustrate the steps that you should be taking in order to heal yourselves and to cultivate self-love before trying to date. I have to thank every man that left me. I would have never been alone this long. <laughs> and, and really got to know myself. I, I feel that as young women, we're devoting ourselves to this programming of love. And the truth is you got to love everything, not the poor guy that you, <laughs> that you decided to hook up with. Message. <laughs> Mic drop moment. This is words from a very wise woman. I love this. And I totally agree with her. So like this woman said, I think there needs to be a period of solitude and healing for Black women. That needs to be the initial steps before dating. After you've removed yourself from toxic environments, that needs to be the first steps that you take as a divested woman. That should be an essential part of your divestment journey. I'm not saying be alone forever. I'm not saying to wait until you're her age to finally settle down. But I am saying take some time to heal. Reflect. Learn from your mistakes. Learn your lessons. I'm a major proponent of this. And you got to think about it. Um, if you're divesting from Blackistan, it's inundated with drugs and poverty and crime and violence and things like femicide and other really traumatizing circumstances. It literally is like a war zone. That's why we call it Blackistan. It's a battleground. And if you think about it in the real world, what country do you know in this world on earth? where the effing offing rates are astronomical and even the women getting taken out is every four hours. What area like this anywhere else in the world would we see someone who escaped it and survived it and say, okay, girl, let's go find you a man. <laughs> like that, it doesn't make any sense. Any refugee escaping a war-torn country, they are going to say, no, baby, you need to take some time to heal. Um, go seek therapy. You probably got PTSD. We might need to get you a psychiatrist. Um, we tell those people who have survived horrific circumstances like this, recover, recover, take all the time you need. And I think that's what this woman is saying that other younger Black women need to do. Have periods of solitude to do this. I will say before we move on to, divestment women tend to give boomers and women of a certain age a bad rep for perpetuating a lot of the problematic thinking we see today. And I do think that that's valid. That's a valid critique. But I do think we overlook sometimes some of the older women who learned their lessons after they got burned. And no, they didn't divest, but after they hit their head a few times, they bowed out gracefully and said, you know what? I'm going to just choose solitude. I'm going to just choose singlehood. That's way better than being miserably married back then. And I'd like for you all to chime in the chat if you know of elder Black women who were smart like this. And they may not have necessarily divested, but they got burned a couple times and learned from their lessons. And instead of settling with any due in the name of Black love and Black male worship, they got the F on. That's what it sounds like this woman did. Um, and my grandmother was one of them. She was married several times, but also was hypergamous <laughs> back then. She collected her little bit of coin from each marriage. Um, she left the last marriage with the house. And it wasn't much child, but uh, <laughs> she, she, she didn't leave it empty-handed. But then after she learned her lessons from those marriages, she learned from her mistakes and decided to enjoy her singlehood and focus on raising her children. And that's what she's been doing. And now she turns 85 years old on Friday. I personally never seen her with a desk or any man for that matter my entire life. And I'm 34 years old. Um, and so I think there's something to be said about that wisdom there. Yes, um, some of them did end up falling victim to toxic relationships early on, but several of them did get out of that after hitting their heads a few times and learn to affirm themselves and how to practice self-love and learn to embrace their solitude instead of settling for mistreatment and seeking validation from a man. So I think that's what this woman is saying. And I think that Black women could take a page out of these women's books.
taking some time to heal, taking some time to be alone, even after divesting, just healing, focusing on cultivating self-love and loving yourself prior to entering in a relationship. Let's look at these next few clips of Guy's words on how to cultivate self-love. Whoever needs to hear this, it's not selfish to love yourself, to take care of yourself, or to make your happiness a priority. It's necessary. For our audio listeners who are listening to this last clip, it says how to practice self-love, let go of the old you, give yourself grace, daily affirmations in the mirror, solo dates, dating yourself, forgiving yourself for not knowing better, and giving yourself permission to rest. I love this. I love this. In full transparency moment, for me, I struggle with some of these areas. So areas of opportunity that sometimes is a challenge for me is giving myself grace. And forgiving myself for prior mistakes. Y'all know I'm a perfectionist child. It's it's prevalent in my career. And y'all even say y'all see it in my channel. <laughs> so it is really hard for me sometimes to come to terms with some of the previous mistakes that I made. But through therapy and healing, it's possible. It's possible to come to terms with that. And I've gotten better over the years. Um, also, this woman says, learn how to date yourself, which I love that tip. And I strongly encourage it. I absolutely love going out by myself. During my single hood period, you couldn't tell me nothing. And still to this day, while in a relationship, I love to grab lunch solo. I love to go shopping alone. I love going to the movies, even traveling by myself for weekend trips every so often. A lot of Black women are so insecure and so self-conscious, they get very uncomfortable with that idea and with the idea of being alone while out. And my thing is, if you don't want to be around you, what makes you think anyone else would want to be around you? Black, blue, purple, white, or whatever. Like, who would? So divested women need to learn to be comfortable with yourself. Learn to value yourself. Practice self-love, self-adoration. Pour into yourself. She also said affirmations every day. This is something that I do every morning that my therapist, she said, just do, do your affirmations every single day, every single day. You know, even if you're struggling with some insecurities, um, the subconscious mind is an incredible thing. And the more you talk to yourself positively, it doesn't matter if you really think it's true, but you start to believe it. So it's so important to incorporate positive self-talk and to speak to ourselves kindly. Um, she talks about looking into yourself in the mirror while saying those kind, affirming words. I love that. I haven't done that myself, but I think that's so powerful. Because how impactful is it to look yourself in the face and in the eyes and to say things like, oh, you're beautiful. I love you. You're incredible. While looking at the reflection of yourself. Um, the other thing she said before we keep going, she said, give yourself rest. Give yourself rest. Give yourself permission to recoup and to take breaks. As a perfectionist, that's something that I struggle with, too. You know, even even with my channel, even at, you know, my place of employment, um, you know, it's hard for me as an overachiever to to rest. But that is important. Um, other things I'd like to add to this, write yourself love letters, buy yourself flowers. We always say to treat others like you want to be treated. I think that black women need to treat yourself like you want to be treated. OK, do the things for you. You you know your love language. You know how you like to be cared for. You know how you like to be um, appreciated and affirmed. Do that for yourself. If your love language is um, a words of affirmation, like we said, do affirmations every day. If your love language is, is physical touch, get a massage. Child, go to the spa. If your love language is acts of service, hire someone to come clean your house if you have you know, the means to do it. Do give yourself a break. Um, hire a dog walker. Hire someone who can help support do the things um, that are acts of service that you may not want to do. Okay, so here's another wise woman talking about some things that self-loving and self-affirmed women don't do. There are five things that self-loving women 
don't do. One, we don't prioritize ourselves at the bottom of the list in our own lives. Two, we don't stay in relationships beyond the expiration date. We do what Nina Simone told us to do. We walk away from the table when love is no longer being served. Number three, we don't settle for less than we deserve. Number four, we don't seek permission, approval, or validation from others about the moves that we desire to make in our own lives. And number five, we don't quit or give up on our hopes, our dreams, our goals, our desires, or our purpose. Bingo. (laughs) Bingo. So my favorite tip here is don't settle. Don't settle. After divesting, after you remove yourself from unhealthy, toxic situations, don't do all the work of divesting just to enter into a new situation with a a dusty of no color. Always be willing to walk away. That really resonates with me. And I'm, I'm talking about everything. So I'm talking about holistically again. So professionally, if you're in a one sided relationship with your job, be willing to walk away. Um, also, um, platonically, if you have friends that are draining or family, familial relationships that are draining, be, be able to walk away. Romantic relationships as well. Y'all, I'd be willing to chop off my left leg if it started acting up. Do y'all hear me? That's That's how much I don't play about me. That's how much I don't play about me and and my my mental space and protecting myself and making sure I'm okay. Y'all got to love yourself so much that you don't even hesitate to remove yourself from harmful or toxic situations and people. And this is going to be a weird analogy. So hear me out. So y'all know I love horror and thriller movies. And y'all know how in zombie movies, it's always somebody's stupid spouse or their best friend or, or relative who get bit by the zombie. And now they about to turn into one themselves and about to eat everybody up. And instead of just taking that person out, everybody freaking out talking about what we going to do, what we going to do, wasting precious time trying to figure out what to do when this, this fool about to eat y'all's brains if y'all don't take them out. Child, not me. <laughs> Couldn't be me. I'm an A right between the eyes, child. I ain't hesitating when it comes to my well-being and my safety. Mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. I'll try to make it quick and painless for you, but uh, you got to go. You got to go. I don't give a how much I love and care about you. I prioritize self first. And I'm not saying be heartless, divested women. I'm not saying be cold. But I am saying practice some self-preservation skills. Practice some basic survival instincts. Even animals have mastered this. They're not going to prioritize themselves last. If I got to eat, why, why am I going to prioritize your needs if I, if I have to survive? It, does, it doesn't make any sense. If being around you will result in my own pain, affliction, and suffering, you got to go. You got to go. Um, and I want to give you all another example, then we'll keep going. But this is how serious I am about this concept. My mother passed. I'm very transparent about this. She passed from pancreatic cancer and it was obvious she was getting sick before her diagnosis when she started to get ill. Okay. So those of you who have any experience with cancer and have people who have gotten sick from cancer in your life that you know, you can often tell because one of the first signs is that they'll start to lose a lot of weight. So think of Chadwick Boseman when those pictures came out before his death and he was very, very um, emaciated and looked uh, very frail. So my my mother looked that way and I I told her, go to the doctor. And I begged her, y'all. And it took a bunch of convincing and pleading and, and begging. And finally, I was able to get her to the primary care doctor. All for her to tell this doctor, ain't nothing wrong with me. Leave me alone. I'm ready to go home. Okay. And even the doctor said, I can see something is wrong, ma'am. Please let me give you an exam. She said, no. And I even asked the doctor, I'm like, hey, listen, can you please just try to do something? The physician said, ma'am, if she refuses treatment, there is absolutely nothing I can do. So y'all mind you, I was livid at this time because at the time I was just um, in the initial stages of my career. Um, I was recently divorced. I couldn't afford, I was rebuilding. So I couldn't afford to miss work. The very next day, the very next day, I got her life insurance policy. 
And I said, here, okay, since you don't want to take care of your, your health, you need to sign this and wash my hands of the situation. I'm not going to care more about another adult's health and well-being than you care about your own. Okay, and I refuse to put myself in harm's way and to suffer mental anguish and uh, financial suffering and put myself into debt because you're not doing the things that you need to do to prioritize your health. Since you're neglecting yourself and, and neglecting, um, you know, treatment and neglecting what the doctor is saying, if you do pass, I'm not I'm not going into debt to bury you. So that was that. And she passed not too long after y'all. And some people would say that's cold and would struggle with that. But I don't play when it comes to me. I don't play when it comes to me. Ain't no grown adult about to have me losing sleep, stressed out, going broke and effing up my life and myself mentally and emotionally uh, because of their decisions. I I'm not about to be getting high blood pressure and having heart attacks and strokes and stuff, stressing out about something that's a you problem. You know, so as soon as my mother made the adult decision to ignore her health, I said, fine. I said, fine. And she passed about six months later, I believe. And you know what my family said when it was time to bury her? Thank God you had enough wherewithal and were smart enough to get life insurance. I'm not playing. That's how serious I am about my divestment journey and prioritizing self-care and self-preservation and doing the things that are best for you. OK, so here's another woman talking about how learning to embrace her perceived flaws and insecurities helped her become more affirmed and to love herself more. Insecurities have the power to empower you or to hold you back. Sometimes you have people in your life and even friends that can see your worth before you do. But because of those insecurities that you have, you yourself are holding yourself back from recognizing that worth. I had a friend that knew, I'm sure they saw the light that I had, but used my insecurities to keep me down, to control other people's perceptions of me. They were able to weaponize my insecurities against me. But once you fully embrace and love and have compassion for yourself and the things that make you insecure, you are limitless. You hear me? Limitless. This is such an important part of divesting. Learn to love yourself fully. Okay, embrace your flaws. I'm personally quirky and goofy and silly. Y'all know I am. <laughs> but I use that to my advantage, especially professionally. Because when people look at me, they sometimes feel like I am unapproachable. Um, I've gotten the feedback that, you know, I come off as very poised, very polished, and it makes me look very unapproachable. Well, once people talk to me, that totally changes. People love to work with me. They love my personality. They, they always say, you're so optimistic. Your personality is infectious. And people develop affinity towards me in the workplace. The men at my job are very protective over me over me now because of that. So embrace your flaws and embrace those perceived negative qualities about yourself because that's what makes you unique. And that's an important part of self-love and self-development and, and healing. Let's look at this last clip with some more insight on how to cultivate self-love and self-esteem. Let me tell you how you really, really build your self-confidence and your self-respect. It's not just about looking good, because I think as women in our modern day society, we think that our confidence is all about how we look. But confidence is so much deeper than what you see on the outside. Confidence is internal. You have to do the internal work by keeping your own promises to yourself. You build your self-confidence by honoring yourself. That means if you have certain standards, you build that confidence by upholding those standards. You build your self-respect by saying, you know what, this is what I expect. I'm not going to accept this. And when you see yourself in a situation, when you, when you come into a situation that tests those boundaries, you say, you know what, I'm going to hold myself accountable because I said, like, this is not enough for me. This is what I expect. This is what I want. And you keep doing that over and over and over again. 
as time passes, it will come so much more naturally to you to say, this is who I am and this is what I'm not going to stand for. These are my boundaries and the internal work that you have done will reflect throughout your life. So you're going to exude confidence from the inside out. So yes, you know, your makeup can be laid, the outfit can be on points, you know, hair looks good, but you will exude that self-respect and self-confidence from the inside out. And the best part about it is no one can take that away from you. Child, I love this. What a word. Indigo, you were preaching on today when you sent this suggestion in these videos. Thank you so much. Because this not spoke to my spirit. I feel like so many Black women listening need to hear this and need to understand this concept and master this after divesting before deciding to date. Okay, we need to heal. We need to affirm ourselves. We need to cultivate self-love and self-confidence and self-respect. She said, don't just look good. Don't just look good. We know Black women are guilty of this. Black people in general, but Black women are really guilty of this, known for investing a lot of money into our looks externally, getting dolled up, spending thousands on these beautiful wigs, hundreds on getting our face beat, lashes, makeup, designer clothing, shoes and bags. Meanwhile, financially and spiritually, we broke and broken collectively, y'all. That ain't it, y'all. That ain't it. That ain't divestment. Divestment is removing yourself from toxic and unhealthy environments and healing yourself after doing so. Doing what best serves you spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. You need to do the inner work before dating. She said, if you struggle with self-worth and, and self-confidence, all you got to do is sit down and establish your boundaries. And just make a promise to yourself to stand on that. Be consistent with it. She talks about how it's going to be hard and uncomfortable at first if you're not used to it. But once you get in the habit of doing it, it becomes natural to the point where you'll naturally exude confidence and self-worth. It'll be second nature. Hell, if you ain't got it, fake it till you make it. Just go through the motions until you actually start to believe that subconsciously. That's how you build self-love and self-confidence through honoring yourself with your boundaries and your actions and words and demanding respect and tolerating nothing else in the best treatment. I personally, I'm very vocal about this. I did an assessment like this um, after my first marriage before dating again. And I sat down and I made a wish list of the values and attributes that I wanted in a partner. And I also made a list of boundaries and ground rules to honor and protect myself. So some of those were, I will never, ever tolerate cheating, lying, or disrespect. I'll never tolerate any signs of abuse, not emotional, not verbal abuse, or physical. I also told myself, I will always look out for myself first. So as soon as you violate any of those boundaries, I'm gone. And if a person starts treating me like an option, I will remove myself without any hesitation. I don't give a damn who you are. This is family, mom, dad, whoever. I don't care. Boyfriend, man, spouse, whatever. Y'all have to be very ruthless like that. And that's how y'all should be in relationships. Child, I've stood on that and never fail myself ever, ever again. That's divestment. That's divestment. It's not um, doing all of the work and due diligence of removing yourself from these environments just to date a dusty of no color. It's establishing high expectations and not tolerating mistreatment from anyone. Child, y'all better turn into man eaters, y'all. Be ruthless with the love that you have for yourself. Put yourself first in all circumstances. People will treat you any kind of way if you let them. They will play on your top if you don't establish boundaries and demand the best for yourself. If you don't treat yourself with dignity and respect, why would anybody else, y'all? Child, now I'm going to conclude because this is getting very long and I'm not trying to be here all night. So we will wrap up <laughs> with wise words from a very smart woman named Gloria Hallelujah. He thinking he that dude but not knowing who this chick is. Cocky mother I ain't asking who no bitch is <laughs> all right <laughs> i love you guys thank you so much for listening if you learned something from this video please like and subscribe until next time see you guys bye
If y'all come across a red iPhone, can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.